Thank you for coming. Thank you for thinking that at 99 years that I can make any kind of contribution whatsoever to this country or to any country. What advice would you give to a young couple who just got married? Stick to each other. Stick faithfully to, faithfully to each other and work at it. Work at love, work at companionship, and try to make love work. I met him, I was a school teacher, and he was organizing competitions for schools. And he was organizing um, competitions for schools. And I took my group and he tested them and feel them. I said, okay, you know. And we went back again and another time again. And somehow the school thing seemed to have fallen off. And um, it became his land we clip. <laughs> and Uncle Wycliffe decided that he was a good civil servant. He would leave work at 12 o'clock, go for lunch, but would not return to work till 4 o'clock. <laughs> he would meet me in the crossroads area and we would pause in some restaurant and eat and chat and chat and chat and chat forever. And eventually I'd go my way home and he would go back to work. <coughs> yep, that's Uncle Wycliffe and Hazel. Then she went to England on a scholarship and Uncle Wycliffe wanted to come so badly and she said, oh no. Because, oh, thank you, Jenny. Stacy. <clears throat> because if you come, I won't do any work. I was very firm on that. Twice he tried that stunt. And I said, oh no. I know only too well that if you come, I am not working. So he didn't come. But he made arrangements with my folks in Portland to get married the week after we ret he, I returned from England. Okay. And my aunt, who was a great cake maker, made the cake and I bought the dress in New York and my sisters, Bri um, whatever you call our dress. Uh -huh. And that was the wedding. And my couple of country uncles and aunts from the hills of Portland, we invited those. We did not invite not one rat from Kingston. <laughs> and we had the loveless little wedding in Portland. Rain fell like hell. And we took off to East Portland. And next day, we took off for Kingston. And the wedding was over. Work began Monday morning. And there we go.
I was then deputy director of the Jamaica Library Service. That's the honeymoon, man, no one honeymoon. after one night. one night. And I was so tired, I couldn't even kiss a puss. Anigo, Uncle Whitliff divorced my Aunt Claire mm -hmm. to marry you. And yet, and yet, throughout my whole experience, Uncle Wycliffe, Aunt Hazel, and Aunt Claire were the greatest of friends, hung out socially with no bad vibes or ill will. What was it about Uncle Wycliffe that was so charismatic, or what was it about you ladies that was so gracious that allowed you to, 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 to separate and unite with no, no obvious feelings of animosity? What, what, what was it about you guys that was so fantastic? I don't know. I think Claire had something to do with it. Because Claire, at a birthday party, held at Elaine's house, in where, the old place where she was. She made a fantastic speech. And she said that, if I were ever to go anywhere, there are only two people I would like to go with me. One would be Hazel, and the other would be Claire. She had the most respect for you. She had the most respect for you. I know that. And it always amazed me that you guys were so civil and gracious about the kids and everything. It was it was very admirable, I mean, it was class act. So that's when, when, it, when Emily was asking relation, uh, relationship advice, I really thought she came to the right place. <laughs> she really did. And it was nice that we could go to Claire's house and spend a couple of days, or Claire and Walter would come to our house and spend a couple of days or vice versa, you know. And we had fun, man. We'd go over the place, we'd, if we did nothing else, we could go into shopping center and check the goods. <laughs> what life advice would you tell your younger self? My younger self? Yes. Oh, I told my younger self that by 42, I would be retired and wealthy and not work for anyone. So that's what you told the younger self? Or that's what, what you would tell the younger self? I told my inner self that I would not work for anyone. I would live at home and I would be rich Talking at 42? No, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so looking back now, what would you tell your younger self? I would tell my younger self half sense. <laughs> Nobody is going to be wealthy without having to work for it. Earn yourself a living, save what you can, and spend what you can for on yourself. Why do you believe Jamaican culture has been so impactful and influential across the world? Jamaican. Why do you believe Jamaican culture has been so impactful? and influential across the world? That is because of its music. The Jamaican music has a ring to it and a beat to it 
that no other music has. And even if they do have it, we don't seem to lose it. I just think also the fact that Bob Marley led the group for so long and was a real leader, that that made a difference because he, he led the group, he le his friends were his students and he disciplined them and organized them and kept, kept them in shape. Can you explain how Jewish people ended up in Jamaica and the role they played in Jamaican society? You know, I don't know. <laughs> I do not know how they came here, why they came here, Maybe money was the driving force. I can't see any other reason why. Can you explain how Indians ended up in Jamaica and their contribution to Jamaican culture? They came to Jamaica in about 1845. They were exchanged from Panama to with Jamaica and the, the, the Panamanian um, uh, um, Indians came to Jamaica and the Jamaican Indians went to Panama. Is that right? Will it us right? What are you doing? I, I, I couldn't tell you. You're shooting? I, I couldn't tell you. Did you say it's right? Yes, I think so. The Panamanian Indians came to Jamaica because the Indians came to the conclusion that the Panamanians were poor workers and they tried to get rid of them. And yes, and they traded off the Indians to Jamaica and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Miss Lou is a magnificent figure that just rose within the society. And everybody who knew Miss Lou copied Miss Lou <laughs> and tried to be like Miss Lou. So she had many followers. She was um, I don't know what to say. Well, she was she was a great elocutionist, and all those who followed her tried to be like her. And although she tried to speak Patwa, she really never spoke Patwa. She spoke pretty standard English. And those who followed her spoke standard English. I knew Miss Lou and her husband very well. And I would often, without my husband, visit Gordon Town any week day I felt like and go up and sit in Miss Lou's room and chat to them for an hour or two and then jump in the car, drive out and back down into the city and on my way home. What advice would you give to a young couple who just got married? Stick to each other, stick faithful to you, faithfully to each other, and work at it. 
work at love, work at companionship, and try to make love work. What advice would you give the young parents who just had children? I would like to tell you. No. Because you'd say, what a cruel lady. No, what's here? No, dear. Two good slap on the behind. <laughs> What advice would you give a, a single parent? A single parent? Same advice to a married parent. Just try to keep your cool and keep them calm. Play with them if you can. Do games and arts and stuff with them if you can and uh, do the best you can. <clears throat> my Jamaica, my grandmother used to tell me about seems like it no longer exists. What do you believe is the cause of the moral decay of Jamaica? I don't know, but the Jamaica has morally decayed. There's no question about it. No idea. There are a number of things that have caused that. The addiction to drugs, the looseness of language, Yes, there is that. The fact that the, the grandmother is no longer a grandmother. She's just a worker. And she lives in the home. And she maybe doesn't understand her role as a grandmother. I think it's sad because I think I grew up with a grandmother and I'm not sure that the, mother, the old lady that I grew up with was a grandmother or great grandmother but I grew up with a very ancient lady who could tell me stories of my ancient Scottish background and some of the fidanglings that they went through and the wars that they went through and the fights that they went through but that did not achieve them anything. But one thing it did do, it caused us to know that we had foreign members of the family. 
and those members of the family knew that they had foreign relations in a faraway place called Jamaica. But by the time my family caught up with them, it was too late. They had no money. All the money had disappeared. <laughs> and so it went. By the time it came down to people like us, we were quite poor.